All right, so this is the rest of the notes for the math aid class. Um, so this is for day 11 um, because we didn't get to meet up this week um, due to the te um, teacher directed day that was this week. Um, the next week is all kind of about catching up. We were a little bit ahead because I had planned on being gone for one week for my conference. Um, so definitely spend, you know, the next couple weeks here getting caught up. Um, if you're, um, if you've fallen behind at all, you know, just making sure that you're logging in and, and doing the other pieces, the topics, um, the tests and the quizzes that pop up there. Um, so we're going to look at volume of spheres. Um, you can see here's all the different examples of types of spheres in our world. So, you know, we have, um, a, um, billiard ball, you know, from pool table, soccer ball, we have, um, a basketball, a globe in our world is a sphere that we live on, and that's a model of our world, right? The moon. Um, we have um, bulbs that go on a tree for, you know, Christmas tree bulbs, um, oranges, um, balloons. Um, maybe that's um, a croquet ball. I'm not really quite sure what that one is. Beach ball, though. Um, so just, you know, generally a ball. That's a really good example of a sphere. Um, and we have one up here too. So this is how we draw it. Um, so we draw a nice big circle and then we draw the dotted line to show the curve going around to show that it's a three dimensional ball shape, not a flat circle. Um, and then we will always show the center dot here and then either be given a radius or a diameter. Remember radius goes from the center to the side. Diameter would go all the way across. For spheres so far, I haven't seen them do that. Um, I'm, I think they generally are going to give you the, the radius, but if they give us the diameter, we'll just divide it down because it's just half, um, for the radius, it's half the diameter. So if they do that, we'll figure it out um, on here. But um, So we're gonna look at the, the formula for the volume of a sphere. So with this one, we're gonna have four thirds. So when we were looking at some of the other ones like cone and pyramid, it was one third. Well, now for a sphere, it's four thirds. So make sure you're paying attention to the difference there because it is a, it, it's gonna make a difference when we calculate. Um, and it's four thirds pi times r cubed this time because it's volume, it's not squared, it's cubed. So this is our three dimensions. Remember that cube tells us it's three dimensions when we have that on the unit. Um, so when we're done with this, it's gonna be meters cubed to tell us that it's volume and it's not an area, which is how much flat space it takes up. Length is just how long it is. Volume is how much three-dimensional space it takes up. Okay, so they're definitely different measurements. So now let's go ahead and take a look at our sphere here and we're gonna calculate the volume of it. So we have V equals um, four thirds times pi times eight cubed because eight is our radius in this example. So now we're just going to go through and we're going to start to calculate it um, for the pieces. So we're going to have um, 682.7 pi feet squared. Um, so let's see, I want to make sure. So I was going to grab my calculator real quick to show you. Uh, there we go. Uh, so we have um, 4 thirds times pi times 8 cubed. So let's do 8 cubed first. 8 and then I can hit the cube button and it will cube it for me. That means 8 times 8 times 8. That's not 8 times 3, it's 8 3 times. 8 times 8 times 8. Um, and then I'm, I left pi in the example on that one, so I'm actually just going to focus on the 4 thirds. A lot of the time you can't type 4 thirds into the calculator. Some calculators let you do fractions. These smart calculators so far, I, have, I haven't seen them doing that um, yet. Um, so what we want to do is go um, times four, that's the top, it's multiplication on the top, and then we're going to go divided by three. So the top of the fraction is multiplication, the bottom is division. So you go times the top, times four, divided by three, which is the bottom. And that's where I got that fraction, which is, or not fraction, but decimal, which is 682.7. Um, so if I bring that guy back down here, we can see here it is, and I just left pi in here because sometimes they'll tell us to, to leave it in terms of pi. Sometimes they'll actually tell us to calculate it using 3.14 for pi. Um, so it just kind of depends on the directions there. All right, let's look at an Alex example. So we have the diameter D of a sphere is 12.2 meters. Calculate the volume sphere. So 
they jumped right into diameter there, didn't they? Um, instead of giving us a radius. So here's their sphere. Um, and we know that the diameter is 12.2. Remember, we don't want to use diameter. We need the radius. So first, I'm going to write out the equation here. So we have volume equals 4 thirds um, times pi times r cubed. And I need to know what r is. So I'm going to fill in 3.14 for pi. That's what they told me to fill it in with. That was that second sentence there. Use the value 3.14 for pi. Do not round your answer to the nearest tenth. So they do not want us to click the pi button on our calculator. That will turn out differently than if we just use 3.14. We're, kind of, we're rounding it. We're cutting it off. Because pi is actually a never-ending number. Um, it doesn't repeat and it doesn't end. So it's, it's non-terminating. Um, we do need to, to do a little bit of work here to get r. So we're going to go back up here and go, well, if the diameter of 12.2, we're going to divide by 2 for the radius. So 12.2 divided by 2 is 6.1. So now I can put that into the equation, 6.1 cubed. Um, if you put 12.2 cubed, you're definitely going to get a much bigger number and it's going to be incorrect because we do not put diameter into this formula. So now I'm going to go through the same thing. I would use that same calculator and I um, work it through. So here, let's go back to the calculator real quick. So we'd have, let's clear that out, 6.1 cubed times 4 divided by 3, that was my 4 thirds. So I have this number, but now I do have to go times 3.14. So I did that a little bit in my own order, the way I like to do it, um, but you can just do it straight across. When you're doing that, it's, it's gonna work out just fine. So this one I get 950. So if we go back to the, uh, the example here, we should get the same answer there. But I can go across and I can go 4 times 3.14 times 6.1 cubed equals, make sure you hit the equal button there, and then go divided by 3. The whole thing divided by 3, that'd be fine. Um, but I, for whatever reason, I always like to do the cube first to make sure that gets entered in the calculator correctly. Then I like to deal with the fraction, so I say times 4 divided by 3, and then I multiply by 3.14. For whatever reason, that's my process that I like to go through. I don't like to just go, you know, from, from left to right. Um, when I'm doing this, I like to start with certain pieces. So it's a little bit of preference there. Um, all right, let's look at the next one here. So we have Ivan's company makes um, solid balls out of scrap metal for various industrial uses. For one project, he must make lead balls that have a radius of 7.5 inches. If lead costs 36 cents per inch cubed, how much will the lead cost to make one ball? So use 3.14 for pi and do not round your answer. So this is um, just like um, when we were doing volume for cylinders, cones, pyramids, and um, prisms. They liked these examples. These are the application type problems. So we have to calculate the volume first. Then we're going to use the volume to answer the question. So these are two-step problems for sure. So first, let's find the volume of the, the sphere here. So we're going to use volume equals 4 thirds times pi times r squared. So I'm just replacing. I have v equals 4 thirds times 3.14 instead of pi. And they told us that the radius is 7.5. So I can just go ahead and plug that right into the um, equation here since it's already a radius. It's going to be 7.5 cubed. So if we go back to our calculator here, we're going to have 7.5 cubed. Um, so I like to do the cube first, and then I like to multiply by the fraction. So times 4 divided by 3, and I like to hit equals there. Then I multiply by 3.14 to get my final volume there. So let's go back and make sure that's what we got here. So yep, that's the same answer we got here, 1,766 and 25 hundredths inches cubed. So that's for one um, lead ball. That's how much scrap metal I'm going to need. I'm going to need that much lead. Well, the lead costs 36 cents per cubic inch. So I need to go over here. If it costs 36 cents per cubic inch, I'm going to need to multiply. I'm using 1,766.25 inches cubed. For each one of these cubic inches, I have to pay 36 cents. So each or per, the way I'm saying that, means multiplication. 
Um, it'd be the same thing, you know, if you walked in the store and you wanted to buy candies that cost 10 cents each, and you bought 10 candies, and they were 10 cents each, I would say 10 times 10 to get 100 pennies or $1, right? So this is the same idea. I just want to know how much am I spending. So in this case, it would be $635.85. Um, so we're going to do one more piece here. This is actually for day 17. Um, I believe it was moved forward, so you could already start to work on it. Um, so we're going to look at surface area of a cylinder. So when we flatten out a three-dimensional figure, we call that flat shape a net. And I kind of started to talk about this in our last class, but we didn't quite get all the way here. Um, so this is just the net of a prism. If I unfolded this and flattened it out, this is what it would look like. I would have four rectangles, kind of bigger rectangles that are all similar size or sometimes congruent in these cases. And then I have the kind of sides here that are pink and those are usually smaller when we're talking about a prism. If it's a cube, we'd have six of the same size square. So it kind of just depends on if it's a cube or a rectangular prism. If we have a pyramid, we can see we have um, and since this is a square pyramid, I have the square in the middle, and then I have four triangles folded down, one for each side of the square. That's why there's four triangles. A cylinder, so if I were to cut straight down the side, if we think of a can and I was to cut it open, I could unfold it here, kind of roll it open, and I would have a rectangle with two circles, the top and the bottom of the can. And then the cone, I have, would have a circle. And again, I'm cutting straight down, kind of on the dotted line there almost, and if I unrolled that, it's not going to be a nice um, rectangle anymore. Now it's going to be this kind of partial circle um, that's created by the cone. So we're just matching up nets to their three-dimensional figures here. Um, so if we look at this one, um, for we would have a triangle in the middle, and because it's a triangle, we would have three triangles laid flat around it. So that actually matches up perfectly with number one here. I have a triangle in the middle, that's the base, and then I would fold down the three sides and I would see that it was a three triangles folded down on the sides. So this one would match A. Um, two, I don't see any cones up here. So this is, whenever you see this shape, it's definitely a cone. Um, so that one's just a little easier to identify because it's kind of the funkier looking net that we come across. Um, so this one doesn't have any that match up here, A, B, or C. And then number three, this is when we took a can and I cut it straight down the middle, or down the side, and I unrolled the sides to get a rectangle, and then I have two circles on either side for the top and the bottom. So that definitely matches B. And then with this one, I have six squares that are exactly the same size, which would match a cube, meaning that they're all squares. So um, that's the difference between a rectangular prism and a cube. A cube has all square sides and all squares have the same length. A rectangular prism means that we have some rectangular sides. We can also have a square side at, included in a rectangular prism, but not all of them are squares. So we just want to make sure we understand the difference there. So this one would match C. All right, so this one's just about matching up nets. There are some neat programs that will show you um, kind of all of these unfolding. And we're actually going to kind of focus in on cylinder here in just a moment. So we're going to look at the surface area of a cylinder. Um, this is what we're focusing on for surface area this time. So again, here's some examples of cylinders when we were looking at this stuff last week. Cans are, you know, very common. Um, glass cups or coffee mugs, anything that we tend to drink out of tends to be some kind of cylinder shape. Um, batteries, cakes, candles. We have a lot of cylinders in our world. Um, that just, you know, we, we tend to see them quite often. Um, so to find the surface area of a cylinder, what we want to do is surface area means the outside, basically, all the touchable space on the outside of the object. So I want to find the area of all the space around the outside here on this curve and on the top and the bottom. So I want to look at the two bases. Oh, that's got scooted over a little bit, darn it. So we have two bases and the middle. So the surface area is going to equal 2 times pi r squared. And the reason it's pi r squared is it's a circle. The top and the bottom are circles. So to find the area of a circle, we go back to pi r squared. And since there are two of them, that's why we're multiplying by 2. And in the middle, 
Remember that had to do with a rectangle being kind of pulled out there. Um, so we have length times width. And I'm gonna show you what this looks like because we, we have to kind of define this a little differently. I know the, the height of the can is 10 or the cylinder is 10, but I don't necessarily know is the length. So let's take a look at this piece here. Okay. So here is a cylinder and this is a super cool little program. So Geo, Ge, GeoGebra, <laughs> if you haven't heard of this website before, it has a whole lot of three dimensional pieces that you can actually play with um, and kind of see what happens with them. So with this one, um, if it'll load, not sure what it's doing here. All right, let's make this a little bigger too. So I can actually slide this open and closed. So we're gonna do that. I can also change the height here if I want to. And then I can also change the radius of the circle if I want to. So I can change all kinds of pieces here. But one of the main things I wanna see is when I open the cylinder, I want you to actually see it. So I'm gonna open the top. And then I, if you notice, we kind of cut straight down. They do it very quickly, but it's a cut right down. And then they're gonna unroll it and flatten it out here like this. And then they're gonna lay it down flat. And one thing I want you to notice what happens is there's these lines. You see how these lines are starting to separate? What they're trying to show you is that the length is actually the same as the circumference of those circles. Because they were curled around to begin with, it was completely curled around that circle, right? And we flattened it out. So the circumference there, that black line, is the length of our rectangle. So that's important to remember because that's what we're going to have to put into our equation. Uh, so let's go back over to our presentation here. Okay, so now if we draw the net of our cylinder here, we have a rectangle with our two circles, and those are a little bit more ovally looking, but we'll, we'll be forgiving of my diagrams here for just a moment. Um, so the length is equal to the circumference. We just kind of saw that in that manipulative there. So remember, circumference equals two times pi times r. That was our circumference formula that we did a couple weeks ago. So if I know the radius of my circle, I can find the circumference, the length of the side. The width is the height, so that's the height here, and I already know it's 10 centimeters. So I'm going to go back in and I'm going to plug these in. So it's 2 times pi times r for the length, and the width is actually the height. I'm just going to leave that w for now. So now let's go ahead and fill this guy in. So we have the surface area equals 2 times pi times 4 squared, because 4 is our radius, so I'm filling that in instead of r. 2 times pi times 4, again, 2 pi r, 4 is our r, and then width is 10 because that's our height. So we, we went through and we filled in this whole piece. Now we get to go through and just calculate it out. Um, so we have surface area equals 2, um, so 4 squared, we would get 16, times 2 we would get 32, and I'm leaving it in terms of pi, just for kind of simplifying this example a little bit, so we're not having so many decimals here. And then over here we have 2 times 4 times 10. So 2 times 4 is 8. 8 times 10 is 80. So I'd end up with 80 pi. And my last step is just combine these. 32 plus 80 is 112 pi. Because pi is still part of it. I, I just haven't multiplied it out to actually get the full answer. I'm just leaving it in terms of pi. So we have centimeters squared. This is not a volume. This is a surface area. This is all the areas of all the surfaces combined. So I hope that helped, and I will see you after spring break.